Dad, what's that? Oh, that? That's just Metasploit. Hey everyone, and welcome to another Nielsen Networking video. In this third video of the series, I'm going to show you how to use a tool that in the proper scenario, with proper permissions, has the ability to help ethical hackers, penetration testers, and other cybersecurity experts find and prove the existence of vulnerabilities in systems on the network. And of course, the tool I am talking about, in case the intro didn't give it away, is known as Metasploit. So, what is Metasploit? Metasploit is the world's most used pen testing and exploitation framework. It is used by pen testers, ethical hackers, security engineers, auditors, and assessors, as well as numerous other cybersecurity experts. I would consider Metasploit to be a key component to any of these positions, and in my personal opinion, is a must-know skill for anyone serious about the cybersecurity industry, which I should add is a thriving and in-demand industry with a real shortage of people to fill the need. So if you are considering going into the industry, now is a great time to begin learning cybersecurity and Metasploit. Okay, now that you understand the basic concept of what Metasploit is and what it's used for, as well as understanding that this video is for educational purposes only, let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first phase we're gonna to want to start in is going to be known as the reconnaissance phase. But before I do that, I wanna show you the lay of the land and let you see our virtual box network that I will be using, our virtual box lab, I guess you should say, that I have set up several machines that we will use for this video. Uh, this is mine. I have permission to do it because it's mine. Um, and we're gonna use it just for educational purposes for just this video. Uh, that said, I did create videos on most of these uh, virtual machines here, how to create them and get them in VirtualBox. So go back and check those out if you want to create your own virtual lab so you can do some testing of your own in the future. Okay, so let's get on Kali now and let's start. All right, we are going to start the reconnaissance phase using uh, the Nmap tool. If you haven't used Nmap or you don't know what that is, I'm not going to go into it in detail. If you wanted to learn, go and check out video one of this series. I go into it in depth in that, in that video, uh, and there's lots of great information there. I've been receiving a lot of positive feedback about that video. So we are going to be using Nmap because we do not have Nessus, which would be nice to have if we were running a vulnerability scan, but we have the next best thing, and that is Nmap, and Nmap is free where Nessus is not. So that said, you would want to make sure if you were doing this on a network, say for a client, um, you would want to make sure there are no IPs that should be avoided when scanning uh, because we don't want to blow anything up. That is not our goal here. Our goal is to be productive and try to find problems so we can help resolve them. So that said, we're going to start off with our first scan. All right, we're going to start off with a network discovery scan, if you will. And to do that, we are going to go sudo and map, and we're going to do lowercase s, uppercase s, and then our subnet. So for me, that's 10.0.2.0 slash 24. For you, that will vary depending on um, your um, subnet. So what we're doing here is we're going out and we're just going to discover all the devices at first. We're going to get some that we'll have to weed through, but that's okay. This is actually a very useful scan if you're just wondering what's out on your network. You know, if you should only have 10 devices and you run the scan and all of a sudden 20 come back, that's probably a problem. Uh, so let's take a look here. It's not probably a problem. That is a problem. Okay, so this IP right here, this is my gateway. So this is a virtual box IP. So is this and so is this. So these first three we can just ignore. Um, and then scrolling down... 10.029. Now this is going to be a legitimate machine, so we will want to do some further investigation on that. And then this is going to be another legitimate machine. And this one has a whole bunch of ports open. So we'll want to do some further investigation on that. And then here we go, another one that we're going in. So these look like our three windows, so it's going to be 9, 10, and 15. And then down here, I know this is my Kali Linux box, so this is us. So now that we have those, we can move on to the next scan. Before we perform the next scan, actually, I want to throw these IPs in an IP list. That way I don't have to type them in one at a time. So to do that, we're just going to open nano, or you could use VI or whatever floats your boat. And I'm just going to call it IP list.txt. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and put 10.02. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and save that and get out of there. That will just save us time. So next thing we're going to do is attempt to identify the operating system. And we're going to do that by doing sudo and map dash uppercase O 
and then I'm going to do a dash lowercase i uppercase l and my IP list dot text. That way we don't go out and scan those um, other devices we don't want, like the interfaces on the uh, virtual box. We don't want that. So this is just going to be the three we put in the list. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And that was really quick. So we got a response back. Let's go up and check them out. So then we can put uh, operating system to an IP. So it looks like this is going to be our Windows XP box. So 10. Okay, so 2.9 is XP. 2.10 is Windows 7. I suspected that based on that um, port 80 is open because I know I loaded IIS on that. That's the advantage of doing this in a test environment. You can load um, certain services so you can test against them. And then this last one is going to be our Windows 10 box. So now that we have identified them, we can move on to the next and um, final scan. Okay, and the last scan we're going to do is going to be uh, the Vuln built-in script scan. And it's going to go ahead and show us uh, any known vulnerabilities, common vulnerabilities with these machines. There are other script options. You could go out and, I mean, you could get, and you know what, for just a little bonus content, let me just show you real quick what you can do. We cover this in depth in that uh, Nmap video, video one of this series. But just for those of you that haven't seen it, um, So they're called NSE, um, NetMap Scripting Engine. And you go out here to nmap.org, and if you look at these scripts, they have built-in scripts that will actually search for certain vulnerabilities or um, certain issues. And it can save you a lot of time and money. Like, let's say we're looking for SMB, right? So we go down here, and you can see how many there are, right? Uh, so you go down here, and you look at SMB. And these are different SMB scans it will do to tell you um, if you have an issue with SMB. So that's a good resource for you i'll try to throw that in the description if not the url is right here or just search for it like i did but but what we're going to use is we're going to use this um, built-in script known as voln if i could type and it's v-u-l-n i'm assuming that's short for vulnerability i'm going to do uh, il to get our um, ip list and we're going to hit enter oh and we're uh, we need to sudo i almost forgot so we're going to go ahead and we're gonna let it run. Okay, and the results are in. It took about three minutes, give or take, for three devices. Not the quickest in the world, but not the slowest. You know, if you had a couple hundred, obviously it could take you a couple hours, but for the price, which is nothing, it's a great tool. Um, and it's gonna tell us exactly what these machines are vulnerable to. And let's take a look. I'll show you what I mean. So first machine we have right here is going to be the Windows XP machine. These are obviously all the ports and services that are open, but more importantly, we want the uh, host script results. So first thing we see is this SMB vulnerability. This is gonna be MS067, oh, excuse me, MS08067. And that means Microsoft Security Bulletin. Uh, remember that, that is important. You will need that in a minute here when we get into Metasploit. And then it does give you a little bit of details here, but if you actually wanted to know how to remediate this so you could fix this problem on your network, which is the whole point of this, you would then go ahead and go to these websites or just go out and Google that um, MS number. And as you can see, there's another vulnerability down here too. Same thing, you could go down here or look at any of these websites to get remediation. And these are all free, um, so you can't go wrong looking them up. Second thing, we are now on our Windows 7 machine. Uh, yes, I can tell this is Windows 7 because again, I turned on um, IIS on this. First thing we're gonna see is it looks like it is vulnerable to, oh, the poodle issue. That's a man in the middle attack. So that's something you'd wanna go out and Google how to fix. Uh, and then as you scroll down, you can also go to these websites again. Keep going down here. And it looks like it has another vulnerability. This is another SMB vulnerability. And again, the website's to check it out to fix it up. Last machine, 20 or 2.15. And that's our Windows 10, and it is vulnerable to the same one. So they're all three vulnerable to this. Windows um, 7 is vulnerable to Poodle, which is probably going to be an SSL certificate or TLS issue. And then um, Windows XP looked like it had one more um, SMB, so it has multiple SMB issues. So we know what to look for. I think at this point, we are ready to actually get in and um, start up our uh, Metasploit. Okay, and before we get into Metasploit, we need to start up its um, auxiliary database, and that is a PostgreSQL database. And to do that, all you're going to do is go ahead and enter this command, and you're going to go ahead and hit enter. And it wants me to authenticate. Go ahead and do it, and it should start up for you, and you're good there. So that's the first thing to do.
All right, with the database started up, we are free to get in. We are going to be using one of four um, interfaces. We're going to be using what is known as MSF console. This is the command line, interactive command line interface for uh, Metasploit. There's three other options. One's a GUI, one is a um, like a command line interface for scripting, and, and the last one is a web GUI, um, which I've, I've only used MFS console, so I'm kind of biased towards that. They, they, I'm sure they're all wonderful. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter. It may prompt you for your password, may not. Uh, and then you're going to just see a, a bunch of lines of um, verbiage come down here in a second. That's totally normal. Don't freak out. And then we should get the uh, prompt. Okay, we are in. So with that, the video is over. Thank you for your time. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. Do all that. I hope you appreciated the video. Just kidding. I know you came here to see actually how to use this. I just wanted to get that out of the way, but you know what? I wasn't really kidding about the like and subscribe. If you're enjoying this video, do us a favor and please uh, do just that and like and subscribe. Okay, and now that we've liked and subscribed, we can continue. First command we're gonna learn of MSF console is going to be known as the help command. And yes, as you, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know I like to start with this command. Uh, it's, it's useful, it's there. Use it, it's a resource, why would we not? Next command we're gonna learn is the search command. And you can search for anything from the exploit name, the MS Microsoft Security Bulletin um, number, hint, hint, that's the one you should use. Uh, you could search for the um, service, you could search for anything. But we wanna use, because we wanna, well, let me give you an example. Let's say we search for SMB, right? Wow, 133 results. Now let's search for MS 17, which was one of the vulnerabilities. Seven results, right? And of those seven, one, two, three, four exploits. So it narrows down the um, searches that we can search for. Now, now that we're here, we need to kind of decipher a little bit of what this means. And to do that, let's just take this exploit. This, is, this means it's an exploit module. Auxiliary is an auxiliary module. And there's two other modules in my, I just went blank what they are. The main two you're going to use are going to be exploit and auxiliary. Uh, they're always followed by, when it's an exploit, it's going to be followed by the operating system and then the service and then um, the vulnerability um, name. So the auxiliary is going to be followed by the um, auxiliary. So it's going to be a scanner, a fuzzer, an admin. Um, there's one other I can't think of. Uh, and then again, they follow the same, the module, or not the module, the service and then the uh, vulnerability. So to give you an example here, let's say we wanted to use a scanner instead of an exploit. We just wanted to know if this device was uh, vulnerable. We didn't necessarily want to uh, exploit it. So we could then type in use three. And then what you have to do is you have to type options and you need to make sure anything that says required has a value to it. So as you can see, our, our host says required, but there's nothing there. So what you need to do now is use the set command set our hosts and the IP of the machine you want to scan. And in our case, that's going to be 10.02.9. And at this point, all you need to do is type run and it will return that this host is likely vulnerable. All right, now being likely vulnerable and being vulnerable are two different things. And as a pen tester or a um, ethical hacker, you are going to be held to a higher standard. They didn't hire you to come in and say, Oh, you know, you're likely vulnerable because this is Windows XP or you're likely, no, they need you to give them proof of concept. They need you to actually exploit that machine, log it and give them the, the report. So at this point, you would then need to exploit the machine. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So to do that, we need to go, instead of using a scanner module, we need to get an exploit module. So I'm just going to go back to that search we were using. MS-17 and find an exploit. And there's multiple ones here. Um, okay, this one highlighted, we'll go with this. This is uh, Eternal Romance. So we're gonna go with use one. And at this point, we would need to check our options and see if the um, our host stuck and it did, it stuck from the scan. So at this point, we are ready to exploit that machine so we can get that proof of concept for our client. And so what you would do is you would type in exploit. And we wait here a second. 
send in the stage. After this, if everything goes according to plan, we should get a shell, a interpreter shell. And what an interpreter shell is, is it's a, a shell that runs within the payload that we are now pushing down to this machine. So let's give it a second here and see. Okay. And here we are, here's the interpreter shell. So what we could do at this point, uh, but there's lots you could do at this point and that will be a whole nother video. Look for part two of this video if you wanna see what you can do post exploitation. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do a sys info. So we can verify that we are actually on that Windows 10, or uh, sorry, Windows XP machine. We'll uh, look at the Windows 10 machine next. Uh, so there we are, we have now compromised this system. As you can see, we could do a DIR and see where the, um, it's probably the system files. Let's do a PWD to see where we're at. So we have complete control of this machine at this point. Um, pretty scary stuff. That is why as a pen tester and ethical hacker, you are there because it's better that you find this out than the bad guy. So at this point you would, you know, take this, turn this, put this in the report and we would be good. And we are gonna be good to uh, get out of here. Um, and we are gonna try one more machine. I figure now we won't do anything with the Windows 7 machine. We'll go ahead and try the uh, Windows 10 machine just to see if we get a similar result. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and since this Windows 10 machine is vulnerable to the same thing, let's just go ahead and search for MS17 again. But let's try a uh, different uh, exploit. Let's try zero. So let's do use zero, clear out of here. And let's do options. And uh, we're going to need to do set our hosts 10, 0, 2, and the Windows 10 box was 2.15. And then at this point, we can just try the exploit and we'll see what happens. Okay, as you can see here, this exploit actually failed to run. And this is something quite common that you're going to run into. So at this point, we're going to need to either try a different payload or we're going to need to try and uh, use a different exploit. Okay, and since I wanted to show you how to use a different payload anyway, why don't we try that before we try a different exploit? So let's go ahead and do set payload. And then you're going to want to put in, since we're looking for Windows, so we'd start with Windows and then we'd hit tab twice. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no slash in front of Windows. My bad. Tab twice, it's going to pre fill 64. Tab twice again. And it's going to give you a huge list of stuff. But what we're looking for is Meterpreter uh, because that gives us the shell we like. And then we need to pick one of these. So why don't we try, well, let's just try HTTP, HTTPS. So then we would type in reverse. Oops, I skipped Meterpreter. The whole point, I'm here. And then let's do reverse. And let's do HTTPS. We do that. It tells us it's changed the payload right here. So now we need to show our options and it already has the IP, so we are good. Let's try it again. So we're gonna just hit run on this and see what happens. Okay, and that failed again. And chances are that again, it's either wanting a username and password, uh, which we don't have, or um, the uh, exploit itself just isn't going to work. So we're going to go ahead and look for a different exploit. So let's go back to MS17. And we were trying Eternal Blue. So let's go ahead and try our friend Eternal Romance over here. So we're going to do use one. And let's go ahead and try that now. Let's do our options. And it kept our host. So let's go ahead and try this um, exploit instead. So we're going to go ahead and type run. You can do run or exploit, either one works. And we just wait. And we are at the last stage here. The next stage we'll get will be the um, interpreter shell, if it's successful. So let's just give it a second. And there we are. So we appear to have proved that we could exploit this machine, but let's verify with a sysinfo. And there you are. Windows 10, you are effectively in control of this machine now, which means this machine, if this were a production environment, not my virtual lab that I'm going to turn off, uh, that is actually isolated away, away from the internet, this would be a huge risk for that company. And you would have earned your paycheck because now you can go to the client and say, hey, you need to get this machine off of here. You need to figure out if you're going to patch it, you're going to decommission the machine, whatever you're going to do, you need to get it off there. And while you're at it, get that Windows 7 machine that we're not going to test, but I guarantee you it would fail this test too. Uh, so with that said, 
I think we have accomplished the uh, goal of this video, which was to you know, run the reconnaissance phase, which we did. We went through, we found some machines that were vulnerable on the network. Um, we learned of some resources we could use to go and try to remediate those um, vulnerabilities. And then we took it a step further and we went in the exploitation phase and we were able to prove that yes, they don't, they don't just say they're vulnerable, they actually are. And they are a threat and a risk and they need to be um, remediated. So that's gonna end the video here. There will be a part two to this. Look for it, um, it will be number four in the series here. Uh, go ahead and look for that. It's probably already out by the time you hear this video. Um, and that will cover post-exploitation. But if you have enjoyed this video, uh, I hope it was very um, helpful and educational for you. That's the point of it. Um, I'm trying to teach you there. We are, we literally have a shortage of cybersecurity experts out there. Go to indeed.com and search cybersecurity. Uh, it is real. So I hope we, we can, you know, spread the knowledge out there, get more uh, people out there to uh, help protect us against, you know, the threats out there. You know, ransomware is a really big thing. My wife's company was actually uh, infected and she was down for six weeks and she's a lucky one because they actually had an air gap backup. A lot of companies aren't so lucky. So that's me on my soapbox. Sorry about that. But um, anyway, if you appreciate this video, you appreciate the channel, go ahead and give us a like. Um, better yet, subscribe for future content. Uh, enough of this. Uh, have a great day and I'll talk to you later.